you like to repair things yourself, like fixing your roof or your bicycle, then you know this problem. In the middle of a repair and you're missing just this one part, maybe just a screw. But you have to stop, you have to get that piece to move forward. Now think, a factory that's working 24-7 or a remote operation like an oil platform. Same problem, different scale. They don't have that part, they might have to stop working for a couple of days or even weeks until they've flown in the spare part with an airplane or with a helicopter. Imagine a world where that never happens again because you can have every spare part wherever you need it, whenever you need it. Because you're making them yourselves, you're printing them. That is one of the propositions of 3D printing, also known as additive manufacturing. For thousands of years, we've done it this way. We took whatever material we needed and we just removed bits from it until we got to the shape that we wanted. Additive manufacturing turns it around. Now you're making things layer by layer by layer. Beautiful things, by the way. The shapes we can get to are much more filigree. Siemens, for example, is now printing the blades in gas turbines. But there are other areas where 3D printing can be useful, and one of them is medicine. Some researchers, they're pushing the boundaries. They've started printing tissue, animal tissue, human tissue, and one day, that's the objective, they might be able to even print a human organ. More on this topic, the opportunities and the limitations of 3D printing in my keynote on additive manufacturing.